Lore of Hashet, the new lore that is coming with the Chaos Dwarf DLC. In this video today, we're going to go through all six of the spells, and then I'm going to show you what they look like on the actual battlefield. Um, I've got that going on behind us, but we're going to go through this because it's a little bit of a controlled, easier way to show them off, and we can get an idea of what their actual spell effect looks like before actually showing it on that battlefield. If you've not yet pre-ordered the uh, Chaos Dwarf DLC, you can use my Creative Assembly affiliate link in the uh, comment section below. I'm um, sorry, comment. And, and description and also too, do check me out on twitch where i will be streaming the chaos dwarf dlc as long as i have early access to it in the coming week week and a half two weeks whatever it is up to april 13th you can find that link in the description and pinned comment as well but let's get started here on the lore of hashut so our first spell is the burning wrath the one that we've seen the most and the one you saw in this whole entire intro period and this is a nice big uh, range damage ability here costing six winds of magic it's going to be doing 30 percent ap damage as well it's got a good range at 300 range and a 30 second cooldown we can overcast this to spawn additional vortices because when it actually makes contact it makes those little tiny vortices or vortices that actually do that uh that continuous damage which is nice so it's cool to see how that works, right? So this goes from 144 explosive to 216 and has three projectiles. So I really like how that works. Um, and the burning and the winds of magic is only jumps by an additional four points. So it does have a miscast chance of 50%, just worth noting that, uh, but it is a pretty nice little uh, ditty right there. And it does require line of sight to the target and it has a pretty damn good long range. Next up here is dark subjugation. <clears throat> which is a hex for leadership and melee defense reduction, and it affects one enemy in range. This is not a hex area, so worth noting. 200 meter range, as well as a 17 second duration and a 31 second cooldown. Upgrading it, though, allows us to just simply increase that duration from 17 all the way up to 35, so basically doubling it. And the Winds of Magic cost goes from 6 to 10. So already the first two have a nice, good, pretty moderate Winds of Magic cost at 6, or upgrading up to 10. Um, I don't know how much the dark subjugation increase is going to be worth it compared to burning wrath getting that additional damage is quite toasty next up we have ash storm so this will be a hex in an area and it has a pretty good radius too effect range is 35 meters you can see that going off in that little video right there 32 second duration with a speed reduction of 25 percent and weakness of fire damage plus damage plus 20 percent now this is that's nice because there is so many things in the chaos dwarf roster that does fire damage even just your base hobgoblin archer is able to pour range fire damage on things so ash storm stuff for 10 wins of magic get that nice area of, of increased damage to weakness to fire and slow down with speed um and slow down their speed and you can get a pretty good probably amount of uh fire damage poured into them and then effect duration lasts for 48 seconds if you increase this up to 14 winds of magic which starts to get a little steep i don't think i'd really want to do that at 14. next we have curse of hashit which is our direct damage ability very similar to soul leech at 33 to 67 um damage per second 200 meter range that's the one with the big old look at that thing look at that look at that hashit bullhead just pouring damage on them uh, now this is of course very good for your single entities and for your uh, uh characters probably on a smaller monster sized unit like 16 uh, it wouldn't be too terrible and also it's only 11 wins of magic which isn't which isn't god awful overcast it to 16 to increase that effect duration from 10 seconds up to 16 seconds so basically you're paying five more wins of magic for five more seconds is essentially how that kind of plays itself out with of course that's more damage per second across those five so do be mindful of that next up we have hellhammer here which is our wind spell and look at this thing oh uh, uh, really long wind up really long wind up so i'm really not a huge fan of that but i think it has to be used in the same way that you would use fiery convocation in which you have the entire line engaged and you have a nice big long chaos dwarf warrior line or even dude just use it with your chaff right that's like the chaos dwarf way throw it over your laborers that are in combat and get this awesome cascading fire damage ability here small forward moving area of effect and strong versus multiple units 48 base damage with 50 percent of it being ap um 60 meters a second is your movement range that's kind of cool uh and then explosive damage of 48 with 50 percent of that being ap both flaming and magic attacks but we can overcast it to increase the duration and damage per second now goes it now goes from damage to damage per second there with 48 so you can see the difference in what that looks like 
Lastly, we have the Flames of Asgore, which are, is such a sick bombardment ability. Look at this little, look at this little tiny video going off. It is a really long windup, though, unfortunately. And that's the problem with, I think, both Hellhammer and Asgore, is they have a long windup. This is 18 wins of magic, and this is 16. So those are going to be, those have a chance to really whiff hard if you don't use them properly. 56 damage per second on this bad boy at a 5 second duration, medius, uh, radius 7 meters, range damage 48, explosive damage 90, all of that being nice and good with that AP damage. Uh, causes major magical and fire damage, medium strike area, strong for a single unit, good against armor. So now that we've seen and kind of gone through the lore, uh, we do also have the attribute, which does, in a 55 meter radius around the caster, it does a uh, set amount of DPS. We'll take a look at that once we jump into the actual battlefield. So let's now switch over to the battlefield and cast some of these spells. Moving on to the battlefield, we have Killing Fire, that lore attribute I was talking about, 15 to 30 damage per second in 55 meter radius for 5 seconds when you cast. So, we have our untainted cousins on the other side of this battlefield coming in for some fun in the sun with their Chaos Dwarf cousins. So, let's let that, that line just kind of hit home on each other before we start casting stuff. Instead, actually, we'll cast Ash Storm first. That'll slow everything down, and we'll see what that effect looks like. Oh, yeah. That is... That is intense. Oh, man, that is intense. I love it. And we can probably wombo combo this. This this will, this will kind of dilute it. I mean, except for 23 seconds, but I want I really want to try and get a really good wind attack here. And I'm only going to do it on one portion of the dwarf army because if I if I kill the whole thing of this, it's not going to be it's not going to be good to show off the rest of it. So let's try and just go right down the line here. And we'll count off that uh I'm going to press play, and it's got like a five-second cast. So it's really going to take a long time for that wind spell to get going here. So let's go ahead and unpause. One, two, three, four, five. Oh! 50% damage chunked into that army. Oh, that is brutal. And you can see... The little circles that we're kicking off, that's the damage that the, the actual lore attribute does here. So that is really nice and very good for the Chaos Dwarfs. So um, we're going to let our Winds of Magic kind of regenerate a little bit here, and I'm going to go ahead and skip forward. Having jumped ahead, let's play with a Bombardment ability. So we have seen the Hammer, we've seen the Ash Storm, and we've seen this a lot of times, the Burning Wrath, but we have not seen the Flame of Asgor. And look at that radius. I'm even going to cast my own guys. I don't even care. I want to see what this bad boy looks like in its full splendor. Let's go ahead and put this in. Four, three, two. And let's do that. Oh. Oh, that is so sick. That is so sick. I mean, it deleted that unit. <laughs> it deleted the hell out of that unit. I mean, to be fair, too, it didn't have much health left anyway. Oh, my God. We have Dark Subjugation, which will cast this as well. We haven't seen this one go off. Oh, that's sick! That's a big old rune on the ground! And that little that little circle explosion right there you saw, that was him taking damage from the actual lore um, ability here. So, the only thing we haven't seen is Curse of Hashut and uh, Burning Wrath. So let's go ahead and reset this match to show those two off. But for Burning Wrath, I want to see what the overcast is like for this. So we're going to double click. And we are going to select an enemy. <clears throat> Hopefully we won't have a miscast. There's always a good chance that that happens. But we're going to find out right now as I unpause and let this go through. Oh! Oh! Not the most accurate of abilities, I will say that. But we also now to have the Curse of Hashet that we'll use uh, on the Lord just to kind of really focus on the uh, cast of it. It'll be nice and fun. Let that kind of come down. We've seen this one before, but really nice to see this up close. Oh, look at that. The Lord had full health, too. So we'll see what, how much damage that does as this kind of goes away. Keep in mind, too, they've got spell resistance. So not a lot of damage on them, right? Not as to be expected when you're dealing with uh, the dwarfs. So that is the lore of Hashet. Now, to kind of give you my overall... Oh, my God, that guy's just knocked down. My overall thoughts on it. Let's kind of break it down a little bit. So... We do have quite a lot of abilities, right? We have these six abilities, and I'll just kind of let this do its thing as we're as we're talking about this. And those abilities are are pretty cool. I think Burning Wrath is actually going to be um, 
particularly nice because you can use it to decimate backline like nice tight infantry units or nice tight uh, missile units if you're playing against dwarfs, high elves, anything in that backline that's just kind of sitting there stagnant. You can shoot a burning wrath into them and, and really punish that. I think that it's it is very inaccurate. That is going to be probably the worst part about it. In fact, I'll cast it again right now, right here. And that is really going to be a detriment, I think, to using it a lot of the time. And you have to have line of sight to the target. So making sure you're on like a hill or whatnot, being able to do that kind of damage is going to be pretty crucial. We'll see this thing actually going off. And boom, that's a pretty nice little hit there. Again, we're dealing with a bunch of spell resistance, so keep those things in mind. And the vortex does move with it, which is cool. And they're kind of knocking things around. That is, that is pretty sick over there. Um, I think that Burning Wrath is a good one, especially when it's six wins of magic. I think Hellhammer, while a very good amount of damage is coming out at 16 wins of magic and a super long windup, you're going to need to have things really engaged like this to really get the most use out of it. It has such a long windup like Fiery Convocation that I don't find myself using it as much, if I'm being totally honest. I think it's awesome looking and it's so punishing, but I think too that it will end up punishing you if you miss this or whiff it or you're playing in multiplayer and someone just simply moves their line back very quickly. Um, also, too, if, it, if it's you shoot in the back line, they just simply move. Flame of Asgore, really cool ability. 18 wins of magic is a lot. It does do quite a bit of damage, and it has a very big radius. So this can be a little more rewarding um, at 18 wins of magic, too. Again, that, that, that is a steep cost point, but it's nothing. It is nothing compared to the, like, incredibly high cost of, like, Lore of Tempests 18 and Lore of Ice is at 24. So it's like you do kind of have that like two less. Oh, it is 18. Okay, I thought this was 16. But I think that that the Flames of Asgore is a really cool ability. I think Blizzard is very good because it's a nice vortex, but this is a nice, good, solid explosion. A lot of Winds of Magic, it is your top tier ability though, so that is to be expected. I think probably the best spell here is Ash Storm. Because I think that so much of the roster benefits from this. You don't even need to use this on units that are um, uh, in route to your front line. You could just use it on your front line with so many units that do flaming damage. This is so nice. And I think Dark Subjugation, too, at 6 wins of magic and 24 melee defense reduction, that is really, really, really good for them. I think that these two abilities, these three abilities, are really going to be a lot of the staples of this lore. Uh, Curse of Hashit is nice, 2 at 11. Where is Lore of Death? Comparing this to Spirit Leech at 8, though, you know? So Spirit Leech is 3 less wins of magic at 33 to 67 damage with a duration of 13 seconds. And you're looking at a comparison here. You're getting a, a watered down Soul Leech. It's costing you more wins of magic and it lasts three seconds less and i can overcast it to get 16 seconds out of it for um five more wins of magic so i like curse of hashit in that it is a kind of soul leech um i'm saying soul leech it's spirit leech what is wrong with me um but i think that the other three kind of complement more the style of the military a little bit better. Dark Subjugation and Ash Storm probably being the, the two standout ones over Burning Wrath. If I'm trying to, if I, if I had to like say only choose two spells, <clears throat> it'd probably be Ash Storm and Burning Wrath. <laughs> Ash Storm, not Ash Storm, or Dark Subjugation. And uh, uh, I think it's one combination of these three is probably the way to go if I'm playing like a multiplayer game or something of the sort. Curse is probably good though, just for getting DPS depending on what you're playing against. But still. All six of your spells, the Lore of Hashit. Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what you are thinking about the Lore of Hashit. I think the Lore of Hashit is better than both the Lore of Tempest and the Lore of Ice, which really had a rough, uh, <clears throat> really have had a rough. Has this been reduced? Have these been reduced? Well, you guys can tell me. I can't remember. And maybe 3PO reduced. 3PO. 3.0 reduced some of the Winds of Magic cost of these, because it doesn't seem as steep as it once was. But I mean, that was the kind of downfall of both of these lores. They were very high lore or, uh, Winds of Magic cost with not a ton of uh, stuff coming out of them. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Be on the lookout for more Chaos Dwarf action unfolding as the days go on and we hit more and more embargoes ahead. But as always, have a good one and take care.